Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer etwas spezielleren Form des Game Dev Podcasts. Denn diese Episode wird ausschließlich in Englisch stattfinden. Das liegt daran, dass wir einen Gast haben, der eben hauptsächlich Englisch spricht. Und hier nur als kleine Vorabinfo: Es geht in dieser Folge, in dieser speziellen Folge, um die DevCon. Äh, nicht Dev wie ähm, Developer, sondern DAF, das ist die Digital Art Forum Convention. Ja, äh, mehr dazu gibt es dann gleich im Podcast und ähm, das wird also eine Veranstaltung, wo sich dann Artists treffen können und äh, sich austauschen können und viel, viel Spaß miteinander haben werden und es gibt Talks und so weiter und so weiter. Aber das erstmal als grobe Information, wer jetzt direkt schon auf die Webseite gehen will, drfcon.org, einfach alles zusammengeschrieben und da findet ihr alle Informationen, die ihr braucht. Und nicht vergessen, wenn ihr dieses Geräusch hört, dann seht ihr bei YouTube oder beim Podcatcher hoffentlich auf jeden Fall auch im Webplayer ein Bild. So, jetzt geht's aber los und wir wechseln jetzt mal auf Englisch. Hello, uh, party people. Good evening. Good evening. Daniel, you are our guest. Good to have you here. For the reasons why you're here, we will come into a second. But first, hello to our other guest, Marcel. Hello, guys. Yeah, and I'm the, the third guest. I'm Simon. <laughs> hello, third guest, Simon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's going to be interesting. First time in English? First time in English. Yeah. I hope you don't lose some subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess we will we will gain some more now that we are on international tour. This week English, next week Russian. Da <laughs> uh, da da da. da. <laughs> okay, uh, so we um, before actually Marcel, may, maybe you can explain why why we have this constellation. Yeah. You already. Um, Uh, spoiled it in uh, episode nine, right? Where you talked a bit about what's happening in yeah. September. Yeah, um, I received. Uh, I think I, I. I don't really remember what I said in the podcast in detail, um, but I will. Yeah, for the people who might have missed that one, I will just go through um, how I met uh, Daniel and how everything happened. Um, yeah, he just sent me a message a while ago on Twitter, um, telling me that he has planned. Uh, like some sort of art convention um, happening here in Frankfurt and that he's looking for speakers who uh, want to say something um, to uh, the audience, to students, to other artists and so on, talking about their work, uh, workflows, um, work habits, uh, whatsoever. And uh, I was very suspicious in the beginning because I had no idea who that person is. Um, and he was not, uh, also not coming from like the, from like the game art uh, scene or so. So um, the name didn't really kind of uh, rang a bell back then. And uh, I was uh, just like being very careful and uh, um, wasn't really sure if whether I should kind of uh, uh, keep um, kind of following that thing or not. And uh, yeah, after a while, he was like really patient and uh, kept, uh, kept uh, uh, kind of like uh, sending me messages and was being really nice and so on that we ended up having uh, like a phone call where he explained everything to me, what he has in mind and so on. And uh, I thought it was super interesting. He uh, has a cool plan, convinced me basically um, that this is a cool thing. And in order to support him, uh, we thought it might be a good idea that we um, invite him over here uh, to our podcast um, so he can tell his story to the audience. So basically the same thing he told me when uh, he convinced me. And that's uh, why it's great to have you here, Daniel. It's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, very well explained. It uh, sounds like a real romantic <laughs> story when I hear it again. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. But one, one question. Um, we are talking about an art convention, uh, but Marcel just mentioned that Daniel isn't coming from the classical art background. Is, is that correct? Can, uh, how, how, do I, how do I combine these things? Who the hell are you, Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that who the hell are you is a little bit the question I get from everyone because, of course, I'm not really, I would say, famous. But the reality of the situation is I did study digital art, actually. I didn't finish it, but uh, I studied, act it's actually, yeah, it was called Digital Arts and Entertainment. It's a, uh, it was, I think, the first uh, game development study in Belgium. At the time, this is 10 years ago, 2007, I started. Uh, I did that, but I never went into the game industry because it. Uh, well, I really love games. I still play games very regularly. It wasn't for me. So I went into more of a creative development and web technology. So I wasn't really on the radar of artists or, or 
uh, people that work in the game industry. Although most of my friends who I studied with, they work, some of them in big profile uh, studios. Me, it wasn't for me. So when I, I've called a lot of people and I always get this question, who are you, where are you from? So I tell my story mm-hmm. and generally they, yeah, they just understand the, understand the story. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I tell them the idea or how I came to being the organizer of uh, the digital art convention in Frankfurt, uh, they find it pretty cool. Uh, and it's actually a pretty good story. And I, I hope to tell it tonight to the audience and you guys. Uh, and a more detailed version of the story because it's a uh, you could say it's like in a it spans a, a decade you could say the story because uh digital there was actually a digital art convention before i was involved in any of this uh and i didn't know this uh until i met daniel liske and i think he's somewhat famous or familiar to most people in germany yeah because yeah. he has this uh, comic uh, the world world saga yeah i mean he was really famous before if you if you would have something to do with uh, 2d art like digital painting i guess there's a super high chance that you know at least the name from daniel liske and uh, and yeah and now he has this super cool um comic series and yeah more yeah. fame. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm absolutely a big, 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 big fan of the Wormwood Saga. I, uh, I think everybody remembers the time that they saw his painting, "The Journey Begins." I was still in college, or I was about yeah. to study mm-hmm. digital art, and I was like, "Wow, super cool!" Uh, but I will tell the story of how I met Daniel and how I, because of him, I became the organizer of Digital Art Convention Frankfurt. But like I said, the story before it spans like a decade, and we will talk about it at DEFCON. We have on Friday evening, we will have a, like a, a lounge philosophical evening where there will be a, a, like a roundtable talk with the old guard, the old people or the, the artists who started the original convention, uh, including Daniel Liske, Keman Ba, Arthur Fast, Simon Kopp, Johannes Fiegelhuber, they're also... A little bit famous. Uh, they were also one of the original members of the DEFCON uh, convention in the old days. So we will all sit together and just uh, share in the nostalgia. Uh, so it will be very, very cool. But my 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 journey begins actually with um, in last year in August. Uh, the story is that uh, last year in May, I left my job from Belgium, in Ghent, and I moved to Frankfurt, or specifically Darmstadt. But, uh, and one of the reasons was uh, I wanted to have a sabbatical, so I took a, I planned a three-month sabbatical in Germany, and it ended up being 10 months, uh, which I highly recommend anyone to do if you get the chance. Sabbaticals are great. Uh, and one of the goals was uh, I wanted to work and improve my uh, website, which is called Quick Poses. Uh, and it's a website that I developed many years ago, and it's like a library and a dress online drawing tool for artists to practice drawing, which I developed for myself in the free time years ago, six, seven years ago, to practice some drawing skills. And one of my ambitions was to have a competition. So what I did, uh, I just sent out this uh, uh, ambitious email to Daniel Liske because I was a very big fan. I said, hey, listen, I have this website. I really want to do a competition. Uh, you have uh, his new chapter was on the verge of being finished and released. I said, "Can we partner up? Uh, you su- you give uh, you give me the prizes so I can give out to people, and I will organize a competition with the theme of the World World Saga." So uh, uh, we 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 talked over the phone in in August, and he really liked it. It was very cool. We did it uh, in November. We launched a competition. It was a big success. At anyways, but. Daniel Liske is a real storyteller, guys. I don't know if you ever talked to him, but if you ask the right question, you can just sit and listen for an hour. The guy has amazing stories about everything. And awesome. really, really, really cool guy. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, like two weeks ago, we spoke on the phone on Skype. I said, hey, I just I need you for five minutes. I have some questions about DAFCON organization stuff. Uh, I think we ended up having two and a half hour talk. Uh, we know that from our podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it's 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 absolutely beautiful. Uh, like I like I said, uh, I think he's a real storyteller. And one of the stories he told me was 
that the digital he told me the he started the digital art forum .a with a bunch of artists and uh, he he really loved doing it and then they started doing this informal meetup and they call it uh, DAFCON uh, Digital Art Forum Convention. And it happened in Frankfurt, which was very interesting. I said, why Frankfurt? Uh, well, the real German style here, guys, listen up. What they did is they looked up everyone's address on Google Maps and they just like made like a like a geographical center point of a it. A triangulation and then bam. Yeah, triangulation. <laughs> It happened to be Kassel, he said, and he said, nobody, there's nothing in Kassel, so what's the nearest town? And it was Frankfurt, so it ended up being in Frankfurt. Uh, so I found this really fascinating, I said, wow, I didn't know something like this happened. And of course, I was living near Frankfurt in the time and looking for a job in Frankfurt. Um, and I really discovered like, hey, there's Crytek, there's a Cloud, uh, the Foundry 42 guys, or I think Cloud Imperium it's called here, I mm. think. Uh, Deck 13 is here, I think, also. There, there's a lot of art talent in Frankfurt. A lot of people doing really creative stuff. And all you hear, or all I knew about Frankfurt, was banking, 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 money, money, yeah. money. Which is completely not true. There's a really uh, nice, lively art scene. Uh, and I thought, okay, this is cool. I didn't know, nothing special. Okay, it was cool. Uh, uh, didn't think too much about it. But... Here is where it gets interesting. Two months after, uh, I discovered by random chance a, a Frankfurt-based artist called Keman Ba, which is also a very cool guy. Uh, when you talk to him, if you ask the right question, he'll also just speak uh, for a very long time. But it's very nice to hear. It. Uh, so he was also telling me the stories about, oh, he used to do this DAFCON in Frankfurt. It's so cool. Da -da 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 -da. So we spoke for like an hour or something. And I said, ah, oh, yeah, I spoke to Daniel Liska a while ago. He told me the same story, really cool. Ah, oh, yeah, I know Daniel Liska. I used to join the DEF CON. So I saw this pattern or like uh, I had this incredible sense of nostalgia or I felt there was some nostalgia uh, to some kind of uh, gone by era. And that's when I decided, I said, okay, uh, I, think, I think it would be cool if this happened again. So I actually just called Daniel Liska on a Sunday uh, like really late in the evening, I said, uh, Daniel, uh, I just spoke to Kemamba and I had the same story, I had the same feeling. Uh, why did you stop doing this? Because obviously it was very nice to do. Uh, and it, yeah, basically said it, his life has changed. Yeah. Uh, has no desire or time to do it. Uh, so I, I basically said, listen, I think this should happen again, even if it's just for once. But I will not do it unless I have your blessing because it's, I didn't start it. I don't own it. Uh, and he said, go for it. He said, you have my blessing. Uh, do what you want. Uh, and I said, okay, I will, do, I will only do it if you agree to be there. He said, yeah, I'll be there definitely. And that's how it started. I think this was February 19 or something, like a Sunday. Literally the, my first, literally the day before I started my job. So I arrived the first day on the job in a creative agency, like a huge agency. First thing I said, hey guys, I'm organizing a digital art convention. I was like, huh, what, what? And yeah, now they're also supporting me and it's it's really cool. So that, that's how it started with a great sense of nostalgia and luck. Nice story, man. That's uh, that's really cool that you are so like ambitious to just take over and say, hey man, if nobody does it, I will do it. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, let, really, let's just really say that's what we need. Uh, let's just say uh, I, 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 you know, you know, there's this curve called the the. There's like this curve in every project where you start off you're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. I love it. And, oh man, I'm. You feel like a god, and then it comes the valley of despair. Yeah, then it quickly goes really rock bottom when yeah. when you <laughs> when you realize you don't speak the language very perfectly and you need to manage all the legal and financial stuff. You think I was thinking to myself like, why? I could just be playing video games right now. Why, why am I doing this? But and along comes situations like Marcel and you, Simon, which makes it really worthwhile, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like, um, th that's the perfect start, I think. Just dive in and then see, oh, fuck. <laughs> that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> uh, I have sometimes the problem that I want to start something, and then I start thinking about it. And I just realize, without starting, without actually starting, 
oh man, this will be a lot of work. And then I never started. Uh, you have to be naive a little bit at least. But if you just start, just do it. Uh, yeah, then you, I mean, if you if you start it, then you can't stop, and then it's like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's ex exactly. Um, if if I if I if I think back, if I look back at the last two and a half months, the amount of work I did, um, uh, I I I think there would be like um, the energy. There's the starting energy would not be as yeah. as big as it was, and I don't think I would have gone so far. I I, I don't think I would have the courage to just you know. Via Twitter, you know, of all mediums, say, hey, Marcel, you want to join my convention? Like, you know, or, or I, I even called, cold called some artists and they're like, who are you? What? So this is like really, and you know, I, I, I had the energy because I, I didn't think of it before. But after the fact, I was thinking, yeah, that was, might not be, might have not been the most elegant way to initiate contact. But <laughs> when, you, when you're just full of energy, and especially when I speak to Daniel Lisko or like Marcel, and they're like, oh, cool, yeah, this is really cool. It gives me even more energy to do, keep going. But uh, it is, um, let's say it's a lot more work than, than I expected, oh. but it's not too much work. So it's okay. To me, like looking at everything, uh, it sounds like a thing that at least I would like to remain for a very long time because it's such a great idea like uh, everything that all the thoughts that you put into it and it would be great if you i could actually talk about the event a little bit about like what you have planned what kind of events uh you're currently organizing and that kind of stuff uh because that to me is really what gets me excited because it's not just like a um like um like an ordinary convention where people are basically standing on stages and just talking there's so much more uh to that One, one, one second uh, before uh, we go into detail there i would like for those people who just right now sit on their smartphones and and are like okay i want to visit the website right now uh, i want to mention how is this spelled it's d-a-f con just together no no minuses or anything in between and the problem is when i google it when i type in just defcon Uh, into Google. I don't find it too easily. Actually, <laughs> Google proposes me something totally different. Even if I put in DEFCON Frankfurt, I don't find it. So if you uh -huh. put DEFCON in quotes and then Frankfurt, then you find it. Or, of course, if you just type in the address bar DEFCON.org. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need to do okay. something about my search engine optimization, I think. No, no, it's okay. I, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I just wanted to mention this to the people uh, who just are like, okay, give me give me the website now, and I can listen to the podcast and surf on it in uh, parallel. Um, yeah, but but yeah, uh, Marcel is right. So what's what's about uh, what will happen? What the the visitors will will be offered when they visit the, the convention? Um, honestly, I don't know what will happen because. It's not a let's say it's not a traditional uh, convention in the sense of an art conference or convention because the, my entire goal was to bring back a bunch of artists who have such nostalgia in their hearts to meet again uh, because a uh, very funny story here uh, I was with Kaman Ba uh, he visited me in Frankfurt uh, crazy guy he just went back, he just flew back to Guatemala two days ago and he's going to be there like living next to an active volcano for the next three months just doing some art like a hermit phase but he came to my office and we were discussing some ideas and stuff and he's good, very good friends with Tobias Tobias Manowitz from uh, Charakter.de in Berlin and he said oh I, I said uh, I told come on yeah I've emailed uh, uh, Charakter.de I hope they come I, inv I invited them I said oh man uh, come on was like oh Tobias used to come and Uh, I had the best conversations with him. Uh, it was so nice. So I said, just call him. So I just grabbed my phone. I said, here, let's hear his number. So we just, I just called Karakter Punde and, and it's like, hello, meet Tobias. Okay, here, here's Kamamba. And they had like this 30 minute philosophical discussion in German, which I half understood. So it's, it's completely about this feeling of there's a, there's a bunch of artists that have not seen each other for years and really wanted. And my goal was to bring them together, uh, And I hope it will kind of inspire the newcomers, the students or people who were not part of this uh, uh, event in the past to really get inspired by the whole uh, atmosphere and mm. want to keep doing it. Now, of course, 
uh, just bringing a bunch of people into a room and uh, talking about stuff is not really... People will not pay for this. It's also... Uh, I also wanted to do it a little bit more professionally. So, of course, when you go to the website, uh, there's a program and it's uh, it's so far what we have is a bit preliminary. But uh, generally, the concept is like during the day, it will be focused on learning and, and, and workshops. So you have talks, lectures, you know, the, the kind of thing you see in every conference. But uh, then we have dinner for about uh, two hours, two and a half hours, and then the evening starts and the evening is supposed to be completely different it's supposed to be like more like a lounge atmosphere philosophical environment where people can just talk to each other maybe draw uh there will be some uh philosophical talks or or just you know talking about art but not in a sense of we must get better at art but more in the sense of we must become a better artist uh so yeah, one of the things I spoke a lot about with Daniel Liske is I said, what did people enjoy the most from the old conventions? And one of the things he said that stood out to me, he said, people really liked that they had long breaks between talks or whatever event they used to have during the, their convention. So they could just connect with each other, talk about some projects they're working on, sketch together, just really, really, you know, how do you say, uh, vibe together. So I, 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 I looked at other conventions and I, I noticed that they do the exact opposite. They have speaker after speaker, room after room, multiple rooms, sometimes talks overlapping. And I kind of wanted to avoid that. So my program was set up in a way that there should generally be a somewhat a sizable break between talks and lectures during the day. So you just have time to breathe, to maybe bump into someone, talk about stuff. And then in the evening, uh, oh yeah, and we have large breaks between lunch and dinner, so people can just talk to each other, connect, discuss what they've learned, draw, and then we continue with the program. I, I really like that approach, actually, because um, I visit here sometimes in Berlin uh, a little art drawing course, like once a week, and... It's really nice. It's like three hours and um, a little pause in between. But what I really miss is that, I mean, the pause is really short. And after that, they have to like close the, the place pretty soon. I mean, you can have a Coca-Cola or something, but it's not like super big amount of time. And that was exactly what I was missing to more, yeah, more socialize and speak more with the people. So I, I really like that, that concept of yours. I mean, when you, when you think about it, um I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. Like, why why would people come to my event? What 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 uh, what, the, what is my niche? What is my speciality? And uh, I discussed this also with Daniel Liska a lot because he, we are working together, or, or I'm organizing, but he's supporting me with all his wisdom and knowledge. And uh, we we quickly came to the conclusion that we don't want to be this kind of conference where where you come for the content. It's basically the convention they used to have was for the people because they wanted to see each other. So the whole the whole philosophy or my philosophy for the convention is, yeah, it's supposed to be about people to see each other. You know, it's uh, this, I mean, we're in 2017 right now. If you want to learn how to uh, paint, you just go on Gumroad and you buy a $5 tutorial from a world famous artist or you just watch YouTube. You don't need to pay whatever, uh, whatever, uh, what is it, 150 euros for a student ticket to go to my event and, you know, spend all the energy and time. To, you don't need to do that. But you do it. Why? Because you want to do it with your friends or see other people that have moved to a different city that you don't see anymore. Uh, and you want to touch Marcel, you know, he's the big artist. You want to <laughs> smell him. That's Who why you go to me. me. <laughs> that sounds interesting. But, but speaking of the prizes, so what I see when I when I look at the um, uh, website here, that you have this uh, student or alumni offer, which is like 150 euros, right? For, and it's for all the three days, right? The event uh, takes three days from yes. Friday to Sunday, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, what do we have? Oh, and then there's a pro and, uh, oh no, there's another student alumni. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so what happened... Um, um, a very interesting story again. Everything is an interesting story, but um, I just had one one price, which is 200 euros or yeah, 199. Or actually, I wanted 200, but Daniel Liska said, come on, 
you're not going to put 200, just put 199. I said, okay, boss, whatever you say. <laughs> uh, but um, I got uh, messages from um, from students from Trier or a big group of three, they said uh, they, they were really interested in coming, like a big group, mm. but they found the price a little bit, let's just say, overwhelming. And I don't, I don't disagree with them you know, for an event that has never taken place, and especially if you're a student, it's quite a lot of money. And then you still have to pay for accommodation and food. So what I did was uh, I decided, okay, I, I was a student once myself, and so we made a special discount for students and students or, or people that just graduated. So if you're a student or a graduate in 2016-17, you can get a student discount for 170 euros all three days. But if you are with a group of eight, so if you group up student or alumni, doesn't matter, if you're with eight plus, then each ticket will be 150. And um, so uh, I was in touch with mm, some people from okay. three and they said, oh, that's so great. Uh, they were really, it really helped them. So now they're... Uh, they told me that they're still organizing a group to come with. And the alumni thing is also th something that I think is somewhat neglected because let's say you graduated uh, last year in, or in August, September. I mean, you're you're not a professional. You're not working professionally. You don't even have uh, maybe a foot in the door and everything is like uh, twice as expensive. It's like turning when I turned 27 uh, or 26 in Belgium, I think. Everything... You lose all discounts, you know, train discounts, gym discounts. Everything becomes twice as expensive. It's like overnight. It's crazy. So I made this alumni discount, which because I thought it was also fair. And um, how many people can can come to the event? What's the maximum ticket number you you offer? Is there a limit? Uh, well, something? yeah, the, yeah. There's definitely a limit. Uh, uh, we the the theoretical limit is four hundred. But that's that's mm -hmm. that's that's like a like a rock concert, you know. Uh, like a, that, that's not going to happen. Uh, I have set the limit or about two hundred, two hundred with the rooms that we have and the location that we have, which is, by the way, I think it's a nice location because I wasn't able to see the rooms yet because they're renovating. But from the pictures, it seems very nice, uh, and it okay. accommodates four four hundred people standing. But uh, with some chairs and the way I envision it with the lounge atmosphere and the, the, the things that I have in mind, I think 200 will be just right. Maybe a little bit more, depends on how many people will come, but around 200 is going to be the okay. limit. Ah, okay, I just see it here. The, the location is the um, Jugendherberge, which is a youth hostel, right? Yeah, yeah it's in the center of Frankfurt. It's like uh, right at the river of uh, Main. And, um, it It's it's pretty pretty awesome actually. It's super close to to everything, public transportation to the Hauptbahnhof and um, to this beautiful uh, riverside in Frankfurt. Oh, and uh, I mean that that's that would be super cool if you could have a room right there and then go to the convention and you have really short words, right? Ah, oh, well, that's a that's a very good point. I actually uh, the first thing I did was actually I have blocked some. 60, 60 rooms in the uh, in the Jugendherberg, the youth hostel for for the convention. Now some of those are for teachers, uh, but uh, most of them, around I think 50, 50 of them are for potential participants, and it's really affordable. I mean, compared to other things in Frankfurt, I mean, I think that the, if you if you uh, if you go in an eight person bedroom, uh, it's 80 euros for Uh, yeah, 80 euros for th two nights, three days with breakfast, dinner, lunch. So it, mm -hmm. it is a so, uh, and I've managed it this way that you can arrive on Friday and have Friday lunch and then dinner and then sleep and then Saturday whole thing and then Sunday you also have breakfast and lunch. So all you need to do is basically on Friday morning you just arrive and you have food and you eat and the show starts. Oh, it, so so the the breakfast happens in the in the cafeteria, right? Yeah, yeah, the the the, the Jugendherberg. I mean, it's it's massive. It they have 460 rooms. No. It's a it's a it's a. They have 400. I think 450 Crazy. rooms. They have five or six floors. Uh, it it the building is massive. Uh, I was really impressed, and they have of course a huge eating room. And uh, uh, actually, I'm also offering or for for the event. Uh, 
you can also book just meals. So let's say you have accommodation or you're staying with friends, you can book a uh, lunch and dinner. So you can book uh, three lunches and two dinners. So you can eat with the rest of the group so you don't have to leave. And it's 32 euros, I think, for three lunches and two dinners. And uh, you can choose between vegetarian, uh, vegan, or just regular. Uh, so it's, I think, um, I think we, I got lucky with this location because one week later I heard that everything was sold out. No more rooms, <laughs> no more, no more conference rooms, any, everything gone. So I was really lucky. So for, if, if there's some now, right now, someone who says, okay, I want to visit it, uh, visit this, this place. Is there, um. Uh, is there still like rooms left in the in the Jugendherberge, or uh, did you already got too many reservations and so? It's oh, as just gone? as far as the the Jugendherberge went, I I had a phone call with them a week, week, two weeks ago. They're completely sold out for the weekend. Four hundred fifty rooms, all gone. But no, no, I mean for for your sixty reserved. I mean, ah, uh, well, yeah, for for my for my sixty, no, I have about. Let me think. I have. 40 left i believe so so okay. i i have eight registrations with with the room so far okay uh and the it, we have been live for two weeks now so it's okay um but uh if it doesn't get sold it, it's not a big deal no no uh i don't have to pay for uh, missing rooms it's, it's uh, okay so Re yeah regarding the prices by the way uh maybe um uh, I, i'm looking for a while how this this devcon develops in the future because um uh, i really like on the chaos computer congress that they have um another uh price level which is like uh more expensive in your case it could be for example 250 or something and this is a supporter ticket and this is made to offer cheaper tickets for for example students so that they could get some some tickets for 100 Uh, because the professionals in the in the scene say, okay, I'm like I'm stable. I uh, I earn a lot of money or enough money, so I buy the the more expensive tickets. And I really like that concept, mm. um, especially when companies pay the tickets. Sometimes you have this right. Your company sends you to a convention or something, and then you say, okay, please then buy the more expensive one so that the um, the organization from the convention can offer other people a more cheaper one that that could be also really interesting but i, I think that's mm, that, that's something i mean the the cars computer congress is is like super huge of thousands of of um uh visitors so thousands i i tried to get in last year and then no chance no chance yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. my my Great. my good friend uh, my old teacher and mentor he was an angel last year at the chaos computer club oh okay well, cool. there, he he could also get a ticket but The man is a Twitter specialist. Somehow he, he got hold of a ticket. So very cool. So uh, uh, so if I now say or like mm, I I can't afford the money or maybe on September 8th to 10th uh, this year I don't have time or something happens, right? Or I don't like Frankfurt or whatever. Um, will there be uh, the opportunity, for example, to see some video recording from the talks and the lessons you guys do? That uh, that is a good idea and a question. Um, at the moment, it is on my mind, but uh, technically speaking, I have made no arrangements yet for this um, because there is there there are two things on my mind. Uh, I, I'm playing with yeah. Of, let's say, of course, it's 2017. You know, it's it's a, it's very smart to do it. It's very handy. It's very useful. Uh, But the the thought I'm I'm playing around in my mind is to maybe keep it just between us, you know. Make it I I I maybe it's too philosophical, maybe it's too too emotional or, or too 80s. But uh, uh, I think it might be also cool for an event to be just between the participants. There is um, part of this is also discussion is also about money uh, uh, budgetary it's not as cheap as you would think and I do have to pay for it so maybe if, if there is budget for it I'm, I might consider doing it but I don't know when I will reach my budget and if I will go over it to be able to afford it and if there will be enough time to organize it but I, I, I but I'm still also playing with this uh, this nostalgia idea of just keeping it 
between the participants. But I, I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, it sounds cool, to be honest. When when like uh, the myth and uh, gets transferred via word of mouth, you know what happened uh, at the last uh, DevCon or whatever. It kind of becomes like the Berkheim of art conventions or something. There's like never <laughs> any, never any video footage coming out of this place, and uh, you just hear things, you know, <laughs> and you have to go there on your own in order to figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it is. I mean, it is a. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a super digital guy. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm completely digital. I, I, I don't own any books anymore, CDs, nothing. It's all digital now, and it's really useful. But I, I, I do. There is a sense of, uh, it's hard to describe. There's really something, something romantic spe- about it. Yeah, yeah, it's romantic. You could say there's something romantic, something very special about a moment where there is only the only living proof of it is the people. It's in their minds, and they can only share it by uh, word of mouth. By you know, and and I think it it insp- because I wasn't at the earlier DevCons. I can I can only hear the nostalgia in the voices of Kemam. And, and, and Daniel Liske. And it makes it like, oh man, it makes me want to go travel back in time and be there, you know? But if there's a video, you just look at the video, look at the pictures, and it's like, you know, it's like this, uh, it becomes almost like, uh, pff, yeah, it uh, loses its value a little bit, you know? It's like Facebook. Everybody was really drunk and it was total shit. <laughs> 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 okay, but then you have to think about the concept in, in the first place. But uh, yeah, I get your point. I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I yeah. don't know yet. Keman uh, has said even he has some friends who can live, tre- live stream it. I have some friends who, of course, have some video cameras. I work at a digital agency, a huge one. Uh, they have equipment, they have people, so maybe. But I'm still unsure. I'm, I'm still... Very uh, uh, infatuated with the idea of having something, let's say, romantic. I mean, personally, I feel like um, if it would be possible to transfer the knowledge, then I, uh, I think just having the talks and the speakers and the slides on camera and uh, sent to the internet, that could be a big help, especially to those who can't afford it or can't uh travel um the whole like through the whole country or something and when i for example read uh marcel you do an and uh something about art production of a crisis three level i see here in the program this sounds totally interesting to me um and it would be sad to miss it uh and i think all the other parts like the 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 pause in between this right and the evening program where where it's more the get together this could still be the magical place where people talk about because there the like the personal magic stuff will happen if you <laughs> know what i'm saying but like the in brackets like the dry knowledge drop <laughs> mm-hmm. of of the talks that could be something which which helps a lot of people out there on the other side i totally understand you if you say okay dude i don't have the budget and the time and 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 all that stuff um uh, for for video recording mm-hmm. be- because i mean it's it's a lot of work and not not only having the equipment but also making sure that it works the whole three days this is a huge time well well at the moment I don't have the budget or the equipment or the knowledge for it. So it is, uh, uh, I am, I'm, like I said, I have not made a decision. I don't know what will happen. But if, like I said, if I reach the break even point, you know, it's bills have to be paid. If I reach the break even point and then there's budget for it, then I will have to make a decision because I think you make a really good point. It, it is, you know, uh, uh, it is very good knowledge that will be shared with the world. And, you know, why? Why do we have this technology for you know? So people from all uh, all uh, on the other side of the world don't have to come to Frankfurt to hear this. So I think you are right, uh, uh, but we will see how it goes. If I if I have the budget for it and I have some people, mm. there's even another talk, Marcel. Lighting a scene. I want to see that. <laughs> if, if you guys don't record it, Marcel, you have to record it at home. What about uh, making uh, your own talk, Simon, and then you will be here in Frankfurt with us? Hey, how about how about we- this idea? How about you come to the <laughs> convention and you just be our live broadcaster, like live radio guy? <laughs> no, but, but it's um, actually I see some sometimes that people were at summer convention and for some reason there was no recording or something, and then they just sit home at home and record their voices and go over the slides so that's uh, an also an alternative yeah and and um, speaking about my own little talk i will do some some on the add-on and 
to me, it's. I, I really hope that they record the stuff because I, I invest now uh, a lot of time into it and I will practice it. And so it would be really, really nice to offer that content on my uh, blog. Mm, so yeah, also from a, for, from, from my pr uh, speaker perspective, I would uh, really like to see that like under other convention, mm. we, they record it. But we will, they, they have to um, uh, sort it out as well. Like, okay, uh, we don't know if the equipment is working. We're <laughs> <laughs> We will see. Um, but but speaking of the evening, the magic evening program, um, do you plan to have some live drawing models or some people with some costumes or something standing around so that the people can like have a beer, have a coffee and draw them or something like that? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, What? The, the answer <laughs> is yes. It is it is my, uh, like I have a vision. Let's say I have a vision. I have a, in, in my mind, it's like the most amazing evening ever for artists, but uh, it's not yet, let's just say it's not yet uh, organized or tangible. Uh, um, there's a few concrete stuff that I know will happen. One of them is Marcel's live lighting scene. Um, uh, I have a concept for the evenings. Uh, basically, Friday is philosophical evening, kind of. You know, there will be a long roundtable talk about the history of DEFCON, Daniel Liske will definite, I mean, I will just ask one question and for the rest he will just speak for an hour and he will talk about his experiences, how to self-fund a comic for years. Very interesting, very, very interesting talk. We have talked about it a lot already. I think he has a lot of knowledge and passion to share for up-and-coming artists who want to know what the reality is of trying to self-fund Uh, a comic or a, uh, a novel um, very 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 good knowledge there um, and some other stuff uh, which we will see to be determined now on Friday like I said it will be more philosophical so after the talk I had this idea of installing artists and just letting them work while there will be some uh, like DJ live music uh, photo booth potentially where people can just take pictures of themselves you know uh, have fun, some drinks. Uh, and the thing, uh, the reason I think it will work is because uh, I haven't put any pictures online of the rooms, but uh, the room that I have, the big room, it's an old cinema room. And it has a stage and it it has room for 400 people max. But if you put half of it in there, you actually have space to put in some like seats and lounge chairs and some cubes, which I will rent. And, you know, we'll put some lights, like really like a, a summer lounge atmosphere with some cool lights and a dimmed atmosphere. And in the back, there's 120 old cinema chairs, actually, where you can sit. So it is very cool, or at least the pictures that I've seen from other events there, it is super cool. So you have 120 cinema chairs in the back where you can just sit and relax and watch whatever is happening on the floor. Then you have a huge floor. Like I think it's 13 by 13 meters. It's it's huge. Where we'll have, you know, the lounge chairs, the lights, uh, uh, some seating arrangements, and uh, we plan to put the speakers not on the stage, but to put them there you know, on the on the ground floor with with the rest of the people because uh, because I, it feels more. I, I wouldn't say for me in, in my mind it feels more natural, and we will use the stage for other things like put a DJ there and some maybe some visualization stuff. So this is Friday, like philosophical day. You listen to the speakers, you talk about it, and then you see artists working. And then on Saturday, we have a more of a party gathering atmosphere where there will be a huge art tournament and there will be some other art-related challenges and live drawing stuff happening. But it's not yet completely, completely, uh, let's say, on point. But uh, the art tournament will definitely happen. So on Saturday, it will be definitely like a, uh, a wild, a little bit of a wild evening where uh, you have a bunch of artists battling each other in a few rounds. And one of the cool things is that I have invited some of the teachers they have accepted. They will do also a live, uh, hopefully traditional art battle between themselves. And uh, it's 30 minutes, so it's the concept is, okay, we give a, a topic. They have 30 minutes to make a drawing, painting, whatever. And uh, at the end, we will auction off the original drawings to... The audience high you know highest bidder gets the painting that's it you know if it's two euros it's two euros if it's five it's five and the money goes straight to the artist and 
So the artist has some fun, makes some money, and one of the audiences might have an original Danieliska, original Kemanba, whatever. And, and the other things around it are still not yet determined, but it will be very party-like atmosphere lounge. And on Sunday, it's like more like reflection day. So we have some master classes. We have, uh, uh, what's it called? Portfolio review. And then it's basically goodbye time and a little bit of cool down time. So that, that is the philosophy of the evenings uh, for the days. So like the Sunday ends... Oh no, actually there's an after party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The after parties will be completely impulsive. Uh, so uh, not planning anything. We're just whoever is there. Uh, let's go for dinner or for drinks, for schnitzel, whatever you like. The schnitzel sounds always awesome. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> schnitzel. Okay, great. And the art tournament, is it like... Um, do Will the winner be defined by quality of work or... Um, I'm asking because we back then we when when we were in Games Academy we had this little forum uh, where we yeah communicated a little bit and we did a little art tournament as well and there someone had to paint I think a superhero or a super uh, monster or something and then then the another guy would have to paint another monster which can. Uh, win over the yeah, other. That is pretty cool. So so the idea was I mean t sure to practice but there you could be just creative and even if your drawing isn't like high quality like the other one you could win by creativity because your monster was like i don't know uh maybe yeah now i don't have a good example marcel you, you sure have a good example for that <laughs> right do you remember this right yeah i i was just looking for uh, my contribution to it uh, it was meth uh, methane man's revenge i i don't know what that uh, um little like crappy sketch was Uh, um, countering, but it basically was a human flamethrower. I posted it in your yeah, yeah, yeah. There was probably some 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 icy uh, uh, like superhero that was fighting oh, with my with my flamethrower guy. You forgot to draw some underwear. <laughs> yeah, and then then you could like you could like for example now paint a huge sandman who just put some sand on the fire, and yeah. then it's like off and then maybe there would be silicon created from that and then there's a glass superhero or something i, I don't know you know like uh creative stuff like that how, how do you plan to uh, organize the tournament well, what's the uh, can can everyone participate or is it just more for the masters or uh, yeah you know this is a really beneficial interview because you're asking all kinds of questions which i haven't really thought about um so let's see on the top of my mind um um I have never done a, an art tournament or, or let's say organized. So, but I think I think there is a. You only have 30 minutes, so unless you are a artist, a master, you know, with years of experience, you don't really have time to make a wonderful art piece. So, of course, the creativity needs to shine through in these 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if someone has a perfectly perfect drawing in 30 minutes, but it doesn't really inspire doesn't really go like wow that that's interesting you you don't you don't don't expect immediately to win so there there will be a balance between creativity and technique but it will be more more weight to creativity of course now if if you if if someone produces a perfectly creative piece in 30 minutes i don't think you should be entering this competition because it's obviously not for you you're already a master you're already probably making enough money in anything you don't need to steal the prize from the the students it's it's the art tournament is more for students of course and we do uh, uh as for judging i'm still not sure how to do it but i'm pretty sure it will be a panel of the speaker so marcel everyone will have a say like okay who do we think is the should get the award or should go through the but it's important to understand that because of time constraints and organizational constraints, uh, the art tournament will have a pre-selection in the morning, on f on Saturday morning, uh, after breakfast. We have a one-hour pause. Uh, there will be a pre-selection where uh, we will have to, uh, you will have to do an art-related art, art uh, related challenge, and we, we can only accept 18 people for the tournament in the evening because of time constraints. And these 18 people will be divided into three groups, six each, And uh, these six people will battle against each other on stage, and uh, uh, they get 30 minutes. 
and then two, the best two that are selected by the teachers probably, uh, will go to the next round. So you will have like uh, three rounds, uh, six people, six people, six people, and from each round, two people will go to the finale. And the finale is again six people, mm. and from this six people, we will select three winners, you know, place one, two, three. For the first place, we already have thanks to Wacom, shout out to Wacom, uh, because they were really kind to uh, give us, first of all, a lot of intuos. So we have intuos for participants to draw on. And they also will give away one intuos as a first prize to the winner. Wow. Yep, Dude, yep, awesome. yep. Uh, uh, so really cool. Uh, so, so what's uh, for f- prize two and three is not yet determined, but we'll, you know, I still have, we'll make uh, it worth um, it. T- Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005 <laughs> Tiger Road. <laughs> I still have some old socks from 2018. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, um, Wacom uh, seems to be pretty active in that scene because uh, um, in, in the first episode of our podcast, I um, talked about an event which I attended and it was also done by Wacom. And yeah, they they put really cool artists there, put put interest there and then yeah, had some talks. It was really, really nice. Yeah, They, they seemed to really support the... Um, Uh, the art scene Mm -hmm. Um, by the way since we are talking in English all the time I just saw in your FAQ on the website that also the main language of the event so all the talks and stuff like that will be in English as well is is that right well I yeah I I guess I expect an international audience but if if the whole room is in or Germans I just speak German I would say no no I'm I'm, I'm just like the talks um, will those be in English or will those be in German or will there be a mixture? Well, uh, what's as, as far as I'm concerned or I'm talking to potential speakers, I do tell them to prepare in English. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I, I hope, I'm not sure, I hope there's some people, international people, uh, maybe from Belgium or from the Netherlands or France or, you know, the, the, the neighboring countries. I'm, I don't know what will mm-hmm. happen, but I, I, I kind of expect a little bit of international audience. Uh but we will see. Um, I don't know what to expect. So for the time being, we are we are expecting uh, an international crowd. So we also prepare for uh, an international. Uh, we're using an international language or of English for the talks. makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, I remembered that I was at the DevCon once. Really, in the past. Wow. Yeah. Tell, tell us about the nostalgic feelings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I tell you about the story, <laughs> but I have to begin early because the reason uh, why I was there uh, was Patrick. And Patrick, we had it in the podcast uh, uh, as well. Um, he's working, surprise, surprise, for Crytek, or he was working for Crytek at this time. And um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to uh, talk about this, but yeah, we will see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Marcel will scream if I'm not. But uh, Crytek just launched um, Crytek, no, Crytek 2, obviously. No, Crysis 2. And there was this release party. And um, the company is so nice or so kind to allow the employees to bring one other person. Like, yeah. And Patrick was so like, okay, yeah, if you want, you can come <laughs> so i i went to um frankfurt to uh, join the party which was really nice the uh, a whole club was rented just for this party no nobody else was there you were at the cocoon club pa- uh, release party. i have no idea but I, d- I didn't see you wow i had no idea uh, it was yeah actually i don't remember that we we met no. um the the reason for that can either be that we didn't meet or that I was too drunk because <laughs> free drinks are dangerous. Yeah, totally. And um, yeah, it was all free. And uh, after a short time, I wasn't that clear anymore. Uh, so unclear actually that we needed on the next day a long, long sleep until getting into a state where we could walk again. And um, then we joined the DEFCON. <laughs> <laughs> And to be honest, I don't remember too much. We were sitting there in the last okay. row, pretending to like listen to the talk <laughs> and needed like the whole day until we got 
undrunk. And uh, I remember really good then a talk by Daniel Lieske. And this was really, really nice because he was li doing live drawing and he put on some music from, from a really nice soundtrack and he, he just like really showed us how to relax. Like, oh, man, everything is cool. Everything is relaxed. We do put some music on and then we just start painting and it was one of these sessions where he didn't know where the painting will end it was totally open it was like okay let's 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 feel it like let's put some some paint on the digital um, canvas and um put something in and he 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 It was really philosophical because he was like okay we will start usually people will start with a white uh, canvas and then put some darker tones on it and he was like no now we invert it we start with a um, black canvas like digital in photoshop and then put in brighter values and he said i remember this still today like he likes the idea of drawing light yeah that's him that is definitely him and not not shadow yeah it was super cool so and he he put on this this really really nice painting and yeah And back then, actually, there there was even T-shirts. <laughs> do, do you plan to have T-shirts? Yeah, this is also a topic I'm being barraged with, if there will be T-shirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was really lucky to get one. So you, Simon, you've been to you have been to DEF CON 2010 or 11, but you cannot remember it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, oh, most of most of it. But yeah, it's cool. It will be it will be very funny if Simon comes to the DEF CON and then some old people are like, hates that drunk guy from that one time <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly who, who yeah. was drawing with with i don't know like a, like a cucumber a or beer bottle yeah <laughs> <laughs> no no actually uh, we, we didn't do anything bad we just sat uh, sat, sat there and like uh, but, but this nothing. is like it's it's funny because you know um you've been there daniel was like hearing those stories approaching me and i know you and like this is closest to circle again which is quite interesting yeah yeah this is this is uh, the thing that is awesome the, yeah this is the thing that is turning out to be i would say uh, amazing but maybe not unexpected uh uh okay uh i i'm from belgium and uh, i moved here so i don't know the scene i don't know the people but for such a large country with a lot of artists a lot of artists it is amazing To just constantly hear, yeah, I've I've seen him, I've talked to him, I know him, I know him very well. He's a friend. I constantly, it is a uh, super cool because it makes my life easier. First of all, because it is uh, like Marcel said, it's it's very strange to just cold talk someone about this idea. It's, it's just uh, weird, of course, especially if you're not directly related to the industry. But because everyone is so. Uh, how would you say, uh, related to each other, they're friends, they have relationships. I can. Ju I just said to Daniel, uh, this could, do you have some friends who you think are cool, would like the idea, who support it, who would join? Yeah, there's this Simon Kopp, Johannes Figlu. Okay, boom, I contact them. And then they said, yeah, we, we know this, these people. And then I talk to these people and they know these people. Uh, so far, basically, the only person that I, I wanted to really have, but I, nobody knew was Marcel which, um, uh, and yeah, uh, let's say I had, uh, I, I went to art station and just looked up artists in Frankfurt and I just looked up their biography and their style. And I said, and I, and I said, okay, who, who looks nice? Who looks cool? Uh, and I said, okay, this guy looks really nice. He has a, has a cool style. So I just went around the corner. Let's say, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Nobody knows him. So, okay. Uh, which is also a funny story how I ended up contacting him via Twitter, which I actually he doesn't know this, but it was I I was thinking about it for a week before I did it because I said who, who does that you know like, <laughs> yeah I thought the same what, what the hell is he writing on Twitter oh uh, that's so cute <laughs> like with your with your biggest crush <laughs> I'm oh Marcel would you like to go out with me please like <laughs> yeah. like via twitter like, dear god so can you join my weird. art can you join my art convention so people can touch you <laughs> so, yeah but I, i actually i i i went to his website you know i went to his linkedin and i said okay there's no phone number there's no email okay so what do i do now oh he has a twitter like i'm like come on is this guy serious like, okay Wait, there is no email. no email. I have to check this. Marcel, no email. What the fuck? Now there is. I, <laughs> no. I changed my website. 
Okay, so anyway, so I, I, I thought about it for a week, like, dude, there must be another way. So what actually what I did, and he knows this, I found another artist, which his style I really liked, and he seemed nice, which also worked at Crytek, uh, Ivan, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Tansiura? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but, uh, and I emailed him, I said, hey, um, my name is Daniel, blah, 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 a little bit short story, what is the idea? Uh, I think it would be really cool, I would like you to join the convention as a speaker, uh, da, da, da. you know, simple story, not too long, not too short, uh, people are busy, and... In the PS, I said, uh, I tried contacting your colleague, Marcel Shaika, but I couldn't find his email. Can you please pass him the same message? And uh, never heard back from him. You know, people are busy, who knows? So I ended up deciding, okay, just just uh, compose a message and send it off. And I got this really dry reply from Marcel. Uh, what He said something, I, I forgot, like... Uh, 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 let me know when it's serious or something. He said, like, like, no, like really? Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I was nicer than that. Come on. <laughs> I, 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 let, let me check. Let me check. I need to log I, in. Wait a second. I, I forgot. <laughs> it was, it was, go F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't, did I really I, say that? I'm so sorry. Man. I, I, I don't know how to, how to find. So now, now people, we know the truth, you know, <laughs> Marcel pretends to be such a nice guy in our podcast all the time. Ah, no, no, no. This, this is what Marcel said. And I quote Marcel Schaika, March 24. Oh. <laughs> Keep okay. me posted about it. <laughs> That's the only thing he said. And I, I thought like, is this guy, is he, is he playing with me? Should I reply? Or And I said, okay, just leave it or whatever. Because at the time, I think it's a little bit my own fault. Okay. I had this idea. It was on paper. It was, uh, uh, in my mind, it was complete, uh, but I had nothing to show to people. Uh, I was working on the website, making a design, which I, I'm doing everything myself. So I had to come up with a kind of a theme, a design for the, for the website. I had to program it, launch it. So uh, I spent whole March and half of April doing that. And two weeks later, I launched the website and I just sent him another tweet, hey, our website is live, here it is. And then, you know, I was like, who the hell are you? Why are you doing this? What the hell? Blah, blah, blah. And, then, and then I said, you know, let's just talk. Let's just call and I can t- give you the, the whole backstory. And I was pretty sure that if he heard the story, he would think it's cool uh, or maybe not. But And now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're like, uh, this is uh, becoming like a... a uh, a book of stories. We can really publish a book at the end, you know, not have any videos, n- no no recordings, just a book, you know. You want to experience it, go read it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the Don Quixote of uh, organizers and managers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Fighting windmills. That's something I had in my, uh, uh, in, in my early start when I did my first art test for a company. Um, I had to do this little art test and then I sent an email to someone and said, dude, um, I have a question. Shall I do it like that or like that? And then I got um, an email reply and it was just one word. Yes. <laughs> it's like, dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there were two options in my email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. I, I will tell you something, guys. Uh, I, it is, I, I have discovered, I already disliked email, but man, is it difficult to get in touch with people via email for the first time. In, I mean, uh, even 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 people that are, I have met in real life, like like Keman or anyone else, you know, you send out an email and you get no reply. Okay, one week, two weeks, it's like, okay. Uh, you know, it's, you cannot, you, you don't know what's going on there. Did he miss it? Did, is he busy? What Whatever happened? So you have to send out a second email, okay? And then... Sometimes you don't get a reply on the second, so okay, one more time, third, and then the third. Oh, sorry, but it's like, like email is horrible. That's why I always try to call people, try to get their phone number, which is less horrible, but uh, it's still quite difficult because then it's like, whoa, you're calling me, stalker. How like uh, like how did you get my number? It's like on your website, really? My number is on my website. Yep, I should remove it. Okay, maybe you should. It's like <laughs> really, it's so so. It is very difficult. That's why I I, I focused in the beginning. I focused my approach to uh, the close circle, but I I didn't want to do a, a like a, 
repeat of the previous uh, event. I wanted to broaden mm-hmm. it, you know, and there's so mm-hmm. much other talent, so much uh, uh, other people that I think should be included. And that's when I started looking at yeah, uh, Frankfurt itself. There's a lot of talent here, a lot of people. So I just, like I said, I went to Art Station and just followed my instinct to find the right people. Yeah, I think you you did exactly the right like to to ask uh, for other people because if you get mentioned like here, I have a friend that did just write him and mentioned that you come for me, that that helps a lot. And I mean, email is not only like everyone is busy and gets thousands of emails a day, but also the technical restrictions sometimes uh, fights against you with the spam folder yeah, and stuff like true. that. Um, so I, I'm really really thankful that we have something like Twitter where where the communication just can happen directly uh, and that you can poke people and and all um i mean uh, find people because in, in the old days you could you could go into the credits of a game and see all the names who worked on the stuff but uh, how to contact them you know so uh re- really good times i mean i i'm not removing that tweet if marcel is not removing the tweet but let's just keep it for yeah uh, it's it, yeah exactly it's for the for, for history <laughs> it's for history yeah uh okay cool um so Is there something more you would like to um, to talk or to give the, the to shout out to the people, to the listeners, to the to the fans who hopefully will soon um, visit your your convention? Well, that's good that you say because I do have a small present for them. Uh, so for all the listeners out there, uh, as you know, the the price is one ninety nine or let's say two hundred, but For the podcast listeners, I have made a special promo code, which is Game Dev Podcast 17. Uh, and if you go to the website and you buy a ticket, you can input the promo code and you will get 10% or 20 euros discount on the price. So, what? what? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I do have to admit, uh, this is only for the pro ticket because the student discount is already a discount and The group discount is already a discount. So, but for the professionals or for people who don't qualify for any discount, you can use Game Dev Podcast 17 and get 10% off. A little side note this offer will be limited to the first 15 people who come and reserve the ticket with the special code. So, um, be fast. Nice. I hope someone will use the code because if not, it proves that nobody listens to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that would be that would be embarrassing. Uh, I'm I'm already really yeah. sorry, Daniel. Um, <laughs> no, but really, thank you very much for offering this to our audience. Um, It's awesome. This is really cool. And um, yeah, uh, I like. I hope people find this story as exciting as I thought it is when I heard it the first time. Because I really think it's a really interesting story, like just the fact that you revived this old tradition of people meeting up here and you want to kind of turn this into a new event that is hopefully kind of existing for a much longer time. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I have no idea what will happen. And I actually, I enjoy the thought of not knowing what will happen. Maybe, maybe <laughs> it will be a one-time event. Maybe it will be something long lasting who knows I, i'm i'm cool with whatever happens i don't know if i don't know if i can say this in english but i'm pressing my thumbs <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> your fingers crossed fingers crossed. pressing my thumbs fingers crossed. great one great one <laughs> <laughs> this is a german expression so i press my thumb and cross my fingers and do all the stuff to wish you the best luck and it's awesome that you do it uh, i would like to see that the event goes for for many many years and uh, maybe one One day I can attend it, uh, not drunk. <laughs> yeah, your chance is in 2017, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Then, hey, thanks for being here. It was a pleasure to to speak to you. Now, oh, thank you. It was a pleasure being online. Awesome. And then I would say, uh, let's meet again in 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 2018, and then we can speak about the next DevCon. Yeah, I hope I have a good story ready then. <laughs> awesome Marcel it was great to have you here as well thanks guys it was great talking to you thank you Daniel for joining us and uh, telling your story um, hope to see you soon yeah and Marcel I wish you the best uh, for your talk I hope I can see it in digital form or something like that it would be awesome uh, let's let's uh, let's hope for the best thanks Simon <laughs> okay then we will see us we will uh, hear us 
some some other day. Bye Tschüssi. bye. Tschüss. Thank you.